I have zero doubts I've walked days on this earth as the best armed wrestler on the planet. After 36 national titles and 23 world titles, I blew my bicep off the bone. And now at 51 years old, I'm ready to make my return as arm wrestling world champion. One of my claims to fame. I lost to Devin Lair in 2011 in July. I did not take another single round loss until the UAL 8 tournament, where I had to pull everybody there. John Brzezin, Jerry Gatorade, everybody like that, right? Over three years, every super match, every event, never lost a single round. During that time frame, a lot of people trying to get a match between me and Dennis. I currently ranked number one in the world, and I was ranked number two. Santa's ranked number one in the world in the super heavyweight. It's on your left. I am without a doubt come to take what's mine. On February 25th, 2023, I was on my quest to win 100 first places. I entered six divisions. I won my first right-hand division, and then the first match of the second right-hand division. This is when it all happened. Ah! Setting up as usual, I hit the go, go. and then all of a sudden, they call me winner, and I'm like, oh shit, I just blew my bicep. We quickly started heading home, talking to everybody we knew who tore their bicep. And I was blessed to have had a friend that we'd met about 10 years earlier on a plane to Vegas. who was relatively influential. And he's like, hey, I got the perfect dog. I didn't find out till the next day how big a deal my doctor was. Because he, he went ahead and FaceTimed, she killed O'Neal the next day. The dude's like a huge celebrity doctor. So it truly was a blessing that I had him work on my arm. That's your tendon tear right there. Fully detached. Yeah, that's, that's, I would say so. So the question of it is, is when you heard that pop, yeah, you, you tore your tendon, but you also disrupt your bone. dead bone. This meant that this was going to greatly affect my ability to provide for my family. I had committed to a, a one-year tour where I'm arm wrestling almost every weekend, and now I can't compete. In two weeks, can I set this off the side and arm wrestle left-handed? No. No, you're kidding. Absolutely not. That's I, problematic, but how long? It is problematic. It's huge. It's, I got sponsors that expect me to do yeah, this. Yeah, but you, know? you can show up, hang out. I got injured. Just don't want to lose my sponsors. But the doctor made a strong point. You know, if you want to get back to pro, arm wrestling again, then you're gonna have to take some time off to let this heal. You got one shot at this, right? You got one shot at this. And I knew my arm was messed up, but I had no idea how bad it really was. See that right there? That's all extra bone. Your elbow is formed like this whole encase of bone around it. You definitely can clean this up so you get a little bit more motion, right. and then the rest is up to you. This important. is important, right. but not as important as no, that. Exactly. And that's that stop that you're getting because yeah. when you I go mean, to yeah, flex, it's sitting, right there. it's sitting right, those two bones hit each other, they can't go anywhere. Right. Well, I, I've catched a lot of criticism for King's moving right, which basically was just a very open top roll technique that I was kind of forced to use after all the injuries over the years. Right. But that's what that's why you can't get that's why we can't get the all the bone all the bone is, Yeah absolutely it's like a it's like a ridge of bone there. Were you aware that I had very limited supination currently? Well yeah you have very that's yeah it. because you got stuff in the way. So <laughs> this will this will supinate once that bones out? I'm sure hoping. That's oh, the point. Wow. That means okay. I might be hookable now. Well, I'm done with you. <laughs> the crazy thing about this injury, I was in the UK four months before my injury doing a seminar. And I actually said, I'd be willing to go back to the most basic level of strength if I could have range of motion arm again. But everyone always said, complete elbow replacement wouldn't be able to lift over 30 pounds. My surgeon's like, I can fix it, but I gotta take that bone out first. Is it reasonable to assume that I could surpass where I've been previously, considering how damaged my arm has been? Absolutely, because you've had such a deficit. But it wasn't all just good news. You know, one of the things that we do is, how do we get you to a point to where we can get a little bit more motion, but your elbow doesn't dislocate? We had a concern that the removal of the bone might impact my stability in my arm, which could compromise me in a match if I got into a grinder and put me at risk for another injury. The surgery was over before I even knew it. Dr. Sadiq was able to confirm he took out some excess bone and unlocked a new range of motion. So we got better supination, which is important in arm wrestling. He couldn't supinate. And then if we look at his bend, a lot more flexion. With rehab, I might even get more range of motion. I think uh, that's the plan. Oh, awesome. That's the plan. However, my optimism post surgery was, was definitely declining. But my doctor, having worked with elite athletes, knew exactly what I needed to hear to get back on track. Prepare your mind mentally to get ready for the comeback, because that's what this is. The comeback. Shortly after, I was cleared for physical therapy, which I was really excited about. Uh, it's been awesome doing some really small movements, but uh, it's crazy. Like my wrist and stuff is sore. I feel some soreness, but I'm getting that movement back. And see, this is just normal stuff right here. When he told me to do this, yesterday, I got all happy and stuff. You're like, oh. <laughs> like, hey. Additionally, the doctor fixed my nerve, which is a turn sensation and feeling in my hand, which I haven't felt since 2007. I feel my pinky tip. Perfect. And I haven't felt that in a long, very long time. The whole bottom fingers are numb. Fingertip to my arm was healing and things were looking really promising. Prior to surgery, this is as far as I could get. Wow. And now, 
Oh wow, good for you. Massive. I mean, it's huge. Seven weeks after the injury, I met my surgeon and finally had some good news. We know it's an attack because there's your, there's your butt. Once Remember we you say go, ball, and I'm in a world championship match in a year, and I stop the guy, is it gonna hold up? I had better hold up. Okay, that's all I need to know. Yeah, this meant the next turn I could pull left hand. But unfortunately, my doctor had different thoughts about it. Would I recommend you doing it? No. Because if you tear this thing, my heart sunk, man, because being on the sidelines and having to watch events happen and watch other people get to do the thing that I love most, it's hard. You are the world champion how many times? 29. How many years is that? I won my first in 2005, so okay, I've so done over 18 years. 18 years. If you get another 18 years of wrestling, do you think you would matter about six weeks? You think six weeks is going to matter? Do not put that camera <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Don't get in the way of your progress. Patience. Historically, <laughs> patience has not been my strongest suit. Let me see the video. You don't want none of that shit. This injury taught me a couple things. One, you gotta let the healing process do its thing. Like you can't just rush it. So it taught me patience. My first workout back, I was actually using the weights my wife uses in her workouts. 30 pounds on wrist rolls, 70 pounds on cable pulls. I mean, it's so much lighter than the last time I did something like this. But every week I was increasing 10 pounds. What that meant was every week I was setting a new PR. And who doesn't like PRs, right? Being a redneck from Arkansas, I started arm wrestling, just messing around my dad. But by the time I was 15, I was able to beat my dad. At 20 years old, I went to the world championships, finished seventh. And, you know, the rest is history now. Once I kind of got to the top of the heap, you know, it wasn't fun anymore. But then once it was taken and I no longer had access to that thrill, to that adrenaline, to that feeling that you get, I felt an appreciation for it again. I knew I had to have more. So that's what this is about. East versus West and King the Table had been asking me when I'd be ready for a match. So Don Idris, I gave him the go ahead. I said, find me a match, see what's up. So it's basically just waiting for the call. Did he text what time he's gonna call? Should be any minute. Holy shit, Don Idris. What's up, Don? Uh, came to the table just less than six weeks from now. Yeah, man, I'm in. Did you just accept the match? <laughs> yeah. So who is it? Yeah. Lars Bro The only time Lars and I have arm wrestled is he went for his bent wrist press and I went for standard press. I flash him by half a second. That's the left arm and that was 21 years ago, so who knows? In a good press position, Lars Rohrbacken takes it back. Historically, a, a flat press has kind of been very difficult, contrast to how I arm wrestle. I'm hoping that having this new range of motion allows me to combat that style better now. But also, I don't want to risk my bicep being extended that way and have someone as strong as Lars laying on top of my arm who has spent a couple of decades perfecting that craft, right? That techniques he's very, very good at. I mean, I know my bicep's healthy, but I I haven't tested it like that yet. I hadn't had anybody jump on top of my bicep with their shoulder. This match is February 24th, King of the Table. Almost exactly one year since I tore my bicep. I think it's the perfect first match back. Let's we find out where I'm at. Let's we get confidence back in my arm. I'll be ready.